the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am Richard Keller, for those of you who have not met me. Uh, as of today, I am a new pastor here. And I know many of you who I have talked to over the last couple weeks are very excited about my being here. And I will tell you, however excited that you are, then I'm just as excited, if not more so. So I want to take this opportunity before I forget, um, as, as I tend to do from time to time, I want to introduce you to my wife, Louise. And, uh, and I, will, I, will, I will tell you a story that happened. We have been married now for more than 40 years. And at one of our churches, we had our 18th wedding anniversary at the church. And the pastor asked me, he said, so I understand we've got a wedding anniversary today. And I said, and I said, he said, how many years have you been married? I said, 18. And I paused for a second. I said, yeah, it's been the best 10 years of my life. <laughs> and you would have thought that I had committed heresy. Because all of the people came up to Louise afterwards and they're whispering, is everything okay? <laughs> Um, again, I am very excited to be here. For those of you who don't know, I spent the last 11 years at Christ United Methodist Church in the Baltimore Highlands area. Uh, before that, I spent uh, 10 years at Fairview, which is in northern Baltimore County. Um, and so I am very excited to be here and very excited to worship with you and to uh, work with you on community projects and other things. Um, very quickly, I have a... Uh, a, a daughter and a son, two grandchildren, and uh, we will have an opportunity after the service if you would like to come up and uh, chat, we can do that. Um, I also want to mention that, I, that the district superintendent had picked me out for this job way back in the beginning, and we came to the, the uh, Staff Parish Relations Committee meeting, and we started talking, and I found out all sorts of connections that I already had in the community. Um, my Louise used to be it used to be a teacher at Mother's Day Out right over at Westchester. Um, she's still on the board at, at, for Westchester Community Association, and still part of Mother's Day Out over there. Um, so that was a connection, and I found out there were people that I knew that had. We had mutual friends. Uh, the, the young lady that does Tai Chi and I went to high school together. Um, so we found out there's all sorts of connections. So I'm uh, very excited about being here, not only for worship, but to become a part of the community. Um, and I thank you for the welcome that you gave me when I came into the church yesterday. I was very surprised to see the flashing sign on the front and the sign on the back. So uh, thank you for all the welcome that you have given me, and thank you to everyone who has uh, helped me during this uh, transition, which as some of you know was very quick this year, uh, for us at least, but uh, we managed to get through it. So I'm going to invite Michelle up to make announcements, and uh, you'll be hearing from me a little bit later. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We do have a few announcements this morning. Um, the After Worship Fellowship is in honor of our new pastor, Richard Keller, prepared by our Missions and Outreach Committee. And of course, today we do welcome Pastor Richard Keller. Um, on Wednesday, July the 12th at 11 a.m., we'll come together to make sandwiches for that Christian community uh, Christian Community Center in the city. Um, there's the children that go, they take the children to a pool and they like to bring sandwiches along. So we're going to make them some sandwiches to take. So on July the 11th at 11 a.m. if you're, I mean well. July 12th at 11 a.m. Sorry, Mary. Um, if you're available to come up and help us make some sandwiches for that um, service, then certainly just come and show up. Um, now, Donna has some announcements to make. Not a whole lot of announcements, but um,
For Operation Christmas Child, we're doing really well. We've raised over $1,700 for shipping, so we're only $1,300 away, so we're more than halfway there. So keep bringing in those coins and donations so we'll have the whole $3,000 before we get to November. Also, we still need toys and games and little craft kits and things to put in the shoe boxes. So we were going to start doing the school supplies in July, but we need July to get more toys and games, balls, little craft kits, jump ropes, and things like that, so we have plenty of good stuff to put in the shoe boxes. Um, and today, in our reception afterwards for the new pastor, we're trying to go a little on the healthy side. So we have some healthy foods, so those of you who usually don't stay because there's nothing you can eat, we have stuff you can eat today. So, <laughs> thank you. Welcome to all those who are joining us by a recorded service today. We are happy that you're with us and love that we are joined spiritually in the words and prayers and music of our worship. We also invite you to join us in person at our service at 10.15 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Only God knows what may come out of our gathering together. Now we'll have Bobby Bean come up, our lay leader. She will lead us through an order of the celebration for a new appointment. <laughs> Dear friends, today we welcome Pastor Richard Keller, who has been appointed to serve as our pastor. We believe that he is well qualified and has been prayerfully appointed by our bishop, Reverend Latwell Easterling. Richard Keller, you have been sent to live among us as a bearer of the word of God, a minister of the scriptures, and a sustainer of love, order, service, and discipleship of the people of God. Today I reaffirm this commitment in the presence of this congregation. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as a people committed to participate in the ministries of the church by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service, will you, who celebrate this new beginning of support and uphold Pastor Richard Keller in these ministries? We will. We will. We will. We will. We will. are the feet of the messenger. Who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation. Would you pray with me? Eternal God, strengthener and sustain us in our ministries together with Richard Keller as our pastor. Give him and us patience, courage, and wisdom so to care for one another and challenge one another that together we may follow Jesus Christ, living together in love and offering our gifts and talents in your service through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May we welcome Pastor Keller and his wife Louise. service to pass the peace. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. May we pass that peace with one another as we wave our peaceful welcome.
morning begins, Almighty God, you rule all peoples of the earth. Inspire the minds of all women and men to whom you have committed the responsibility of government and leadership. In the nations of the world, give to them the vision of truth and justice, that by their counsel all nations and people may work together. Give to the people of our country zeal for justice and strength of forbearance, that we may use our liberty in accordance with your gracious will. Forgive our shortcomings as a nation, purify our hearts to see and love the truth. We pray all these things through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our hymn is, This is a Day of New Beginnings, number 383. Amen. 
Join with me in our unison prayer of confession. God of infinite mercy, be with us in our need, when we neglect the wisdom of knowing our place in your world. Forgive us, we pray, when we trade for peace and calls for mercy, for the ways of conflict and violence. Heal us, we pray, when we forsake good character, hold it around high on the values. Restore us, we pray, when we ignore your truth and then turn our backs on your wisdom. In no cause and enlighten us, we pray. Forgive us and renew us, O Lord, that we may find the truth and the good goodness and the and abide in your love forever. Amen. Now hear these words of assurance. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him will have an everlasting life. It is time for our joys and concerns, and we will begin this morning with joys. Anybody have a joy? I just thought I had a joy of one of the celebrations with my friend who found last night for my birthday, and it was wonderful. Happy birthday, Susan! Yeah, um, a word of praise. We've been praying for Colt. Um, he was born in November. He's been in the hospital since then. He came home this week. So praise for that. And just pray for his mom. She's a single mom. She has a one-year-old. Now she has a child at home with the tracheostomy, so there's a lot of medical care. So just pray for her, too. All right. Yeah, Dan? I have a joy for everyone experienced. We finally had some rain and uh, we were a long time without regular rain. My grass was turning tan, so I think it's going to be revived. Oh, good. It is a joy to have Pastor Keller and Louise with us today. We look forward to many other Sundays together. Another joy is, as you know, Marilyn Gallagher was in um, the hospital, but she has now been transferred to Lorien in Columbia for rehabilitation. So we uh, thank the Lord for answering our prayers and, and allowing her to make uh, the next step in her recovery. <coughs> also, uh, we have uh, many happy celebrations with our friends and families this week, a long July 4th weekend, and we uh, welcome those opportunities as families and friends of getting together. Also, uh, we have the joy that Jim Smith, who is Lori's um, brother-in-law, yes, um, uh, was released from the hospital and he has entered into rehabilitation. As you remember, we have been praying for Jim Smith because uh, he has been going through chemotherapy and radiation and was having difficulty. So we're happy to hear that he is uh, going uh, and entering uh, rehab. That is a, is a joy. Also, um, for uh, prayers of concerns, we also uh, have a, a prayers of concerns for Daniel Jenkins. That's the son of Carolyn. He is having some health issues and we ask for uh, prayers for him. Also, uh, we have continuing prayers for all of those who are going through health issues right now. Um, this weather, um, El Nino weather, um, and, and I read that we're supposed to have this weather for the next 9 to 12 months. Uh, that that's the, the season of this El Nino that we're in. Hopefully not, because there are a lot of people who are having health issues as a result of it. So we certainly uh, continue to pray for them. We have continuing prayers for all those with cancer who are going through treatments, whether they be chemotherapy or radiation, or whether or not they um, are just sort of at a plateau. Um, so we have that. Um, are there any other joys or concerns that anyone would like to offer? I do. 
Okay. I think we need to pray for our city and, and surrounding area for all the violence that um, occurs. Um, there, I think there was another shooting that was on the news and. And as you say, not only our city, yeah. but also oh, yeah, but but all cities in the United States this as violence, we celebrate our independence yeah, today. This absolutely. violence has got to come to an end. And, and may I extend that by saying that also um, the nations, not only our nation, but nations all over the world. Um, Melinda. Well, I was just going to say that because Carrie, my daughter, is leaving for Paris on Friday. And we're beside ourselves, but she's determined to go. She's going to spend some time in Normandy, which I understand is in the country. But they said, my girlfriend, everybody's texting me this morning, like, hope she's not there. I said, no, not yet. But um, it's spreading across the countryside. And, you know, you can't tell your 31-year-old what to do, but you certainly don't want them to go into a chaos situation. So pray that somehow they get some control and people understand the need for law and order no matter what's going on. Uh, are there any other things? Yes. Uh, uh, from, our, from Christ United Methodist Church, there's several that are still in our hearts. Yes. Um, Nancy Lance, um, she has had her foot amputated. Mm -hmm. um, Scott and Sophie are not, are below the weather today. Um, our dentist, Dr. Brown, she is taking chemo treatments. Roland and his Roland family. Ms. B. There, um, Ms. B is um, dementia, and then they have a daughter that's 50-something that needs a lot of care. And AJ. AJ, um, AJ is in the hospital. Bobby, could I add um, Joel Holmes and the people at Christ United Methodist Church as they are going through the same transition that we are? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for bringing us together this morning. We thank you for change, Lord. We know sometimes change is difficult, but we pray that you will be with all churches this morning who are changing pastors. We ask you, Lord, to be with this church as we continue to worship you and praise you, but also to look at ways that we can minister to your people. We ask your blessing, Lord, on all the names that have been lifted up this morning. We thank you for those for whom today is a day of joy. And we ask you, Lord, to be with those who are still suffering today. 
whether it is hospitalization or illness or anything else. You have heard the names that have been lifted up, Lord, but you also hear the names that are our hearts and minds that were not lifted up this morning when we ask you to bless those as well. We ask all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught the disciples and us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It is time to baptized in water, play solo by Phyllis Martin. <coughs> Slavery. 
Listen, I call and telling you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no benefit to you. Once again, I testify to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obliged to obey the entire law. You who want to be justified by the law have cut yourselves off from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. For through the Spirit, by faith, we eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything. The only thing that counts is faith working through love. Please stand as I read the Gospel. John chapter 5, verses 1 to 13. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. And abide in, in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, than lay down one's life for one's friends. And this is the word of the Lord. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for bringing us together this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the blessing of your word. And we ask you, Lord, to help us this day to not just be hearers of the word, but doers of the word as well. And I ask you, Lord, either through me or in spite of me, you might bring the word to your people today that you want them to hear. And we ask all these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to begin this morning by thanking John Ankerberg, John Gaston, Dr. Justin Immel Sr., James Chandler, and others for their insights on Independence Day and Christianity. I was mentioning as I was going through my office the other day that I have a whole series of commentaries in my office, uh, which I brought from the old church, and they're commentaries that, quite frankly, I never use much. Um, these days, pastors generally, at least I do, tend to get a lot of their information and ideas from the internet as opposed to commentaries. So today we're going to celebrate on Tuesday the 247th anniversary of the birth of our nation. So a quick show of hands, how many of you remember the 200th anniversary? So when you had the 200th anniversary, did you think you'd be getting ready to celebrate the 250th? Kind of amazing, isn't it? It's hard to believe we're just three years from the 250th anniversary of our nation. 
My grandson is someone who loves history. We watched a show on Ulysses S. Grant the other, a couple weeks ago, and when we were at our uh, farewell dinner on Wednesday night, I asked him to start, what did he know about Ulysses S. Grant? And he not only told me that he was a, a general in the Civil War, he told me everything about, uh, you know, he, he knew he was a president, and he started telling me, he says, well, he was in this war, and this war, and this war. I'm like, where did you get this from? But historically, the colonists risked their lives, their families, and their businesses to declare their independence from Great Britain. And despite all the flaws in our nation, it is still a successful experiment in democracy. We live in a land that is one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So I want to be among the first to wish you a happy 4th of July. And I have to say parenthetically, as I was driving to the church the other day, I was driving down Frederick Road, and I ended up calling Louise very quickly. And the first thing I said to her, I said, the chairs are out. <laughs> And I am consistently amazed that, you know, somebody said they started early June putting the chairs out. But it's still amazing to me that all the chairs are out now for the 4th of July uh, parade. So as a pastor, today is a day of contradictions. Because on the one hand, we certainly want to celebrate everything there is about our nation. But on the other hand, we recognize that we live as Christians, loved and cared for by Jesus Christ. And Jesus offers liberty and freedom not only to Americans, but to people of all nations. As you may or may not know, the growth of the Methodist Church is not in America. It's actually in Africa is where the church is growing the most. With our multicultural society, we may have people who celebrate the heritage of many nations besides our own. So what is it that we can celebrate as we get ready for the 4th of July and our Independence Day? The first thing is we can celebrate the wonders of God's creation. One of the things that you will find out about me very quickly, and some of you have already mentioned it to me in conversation, is I'm very involved in environmental issues. I've spent my entire career doing it. Um, I am the head of the recycling program in Baltimore County, among other things. And we sing about America the beautiful. We sing about the mountains, the prairies, and the oceans white with foam. I collect quarters. I've collected quarters for a while now since they started doing the state quarters. And as some of you may know, if you've seen the quarters, they also had quarters from all the national parks across the country. And now I want to go and see some of the parks that I haven't had a chance to visit that I've seen in some of the quarters. But I'm immediately reminded of some of the trips that Louise and the family and I have been fortunate enough to take over the years. The Grand Canyon, the Grand Tetons, the Redwoods in Muir Woods, Yosemite, Theodore Roosevelt, and others. And I can tell you both in Muir Woods and at the Grand Tetons was a very religious experience because you see the wonders of God's creation and you want to praise and thank God for them. As Christians, we are called by God to be good stewards of what God has given us. And so we can celebrate the beauty of God's creation here in America. Second, we can celebrate religious freedom. We do not fear being arrested, imprisoned, or killed this morning for worshiping God in this church. In more than 50 nations, about a quarter of the world, Christianity faces legal prohibitions. I've got one of the people at my old church that used to have a shirt with all the names of the nations. 
where Christianity is prohibited or Christianity is, faces legal prohibitions. We have the freedom to choose the God of our choice, to worship our God, to read our Bible, to pray, and yes, we can even pray in public. We can thank God for all the men and women and their families who have served our nation to defend our liberty and freedom. You may not be aware that we have lost approximately a million soldiers in wars since the start of our nation. So we thank the more than one million Americans who have made that ultimate sacrifice. But we also pray for healing for those who suffer from physical or psychological injuries due to war. We also pray that wars will end. Wouldn't it be nice one day that we didn't have to send troops around the world? And wouldn't it be nice if we did not have services for men and women who passed away in war? Fourth, we can thank God for all of the blessings of America, the blessings God has given our family, our friends, and our neighbors. I'm just going to ask you to close your eyes for about five seconds and just think about all of the things that God has given you, all the blessings that God has provided. And finally, although certainly we pray for an end to the violence in Baltimore City and elsewhere, we still do have relative peace in our nation. While we hate the violence in Baltimore and other cities, we have not had a civil war since April 9th, 1865. But our focus today is on the freedom we experience as Americans versus the freedom that we experience through Jesus Christ. We live in a nation with a Bill of Rights, which is an extraordinary document that guarantees, among other things, freedom of speech, the press, religion, peaceable assembly, and freedom to petition the, govern the government. The Bill of Rights also protects people from unreasonable search and seizure, offers due process, protects us from double jeopardy, offers trial by jury, protects us from excessive bail, and cruel and unusual punishment, and gives us other protections. I would argue, however, that many times we take these freedoms that we have for granted. I'm reminded of the movie The American President, where at the end of the movie, President Shepard is telling the people that operating in government is advanced citizenship that you have to really want it, and it's very difficult sometimes. We fail to realize that freedom is not free, and we must consistently work to defend and protect these freedoms. Now, our scripture is full of stories of freedom, including the Israelites being released from slavery in Egypt and captivity in Babylon. So a quick show of hands, how many of you read the upper room this morning? Remember what it was about this morning? It was Jeremiah talking about the people being released from captivity in Babylon. In Luke 4.18, Jesus quoted Isaiah 61.1 and promised freedom to the captives. Our Christian, as Christians, our greatest freedom is the freedom and independence from Satan, sin, and death that Jesus provided on the cross by dying and then rising again. We also have freedom from eternal damnation and can spend eternity with Jesus Christ and those who came before us in faith. We can let those freedoms get away, but they will not be taken from us. Paul reminds us in Romans, nothing can separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus frees us from condemnation for our sins. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. But our freedom means that we should love the Lord our God, as Jesus said in Matthew's Gospel, with all of our heart, soul, and mind. In our Gospel lesson from this morning, 
Jesus tells us that we should be fruitful by being the branches of the vine, Jesus Christ, and to love others as Jesus loved us. In his Independence Day sermon, James Chandler tells us that we have freedom in Jesus Christ to battle Satan. What does that freedom mean? First, it means freedom to give our minds to God instead of giving our minds to the ways of sin. Philippians 4.8 tells us, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if, excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. <coughs> Jesus allows us to control our emotions, avoiding envy, anger, and hate, hatred. How many of you struggle with that? So we have people that struggle with, with anger, envy, and hatred. There's no more guilt. We have control of our physical bodies to avoid addictions. We avoid the legalism that Jesus saw in the Pharisees. We overcome spiritual apathy and get back to the business of reading scripture, praying, witnessing, and worshiping. And finally, experiencing eternal freedom with Jesus Christ in heaven. Now, we noted earlier that it is a challenge for us to protect our freedoms that we have as Americans. In the same way, we have to protect our freedom from Satan, sin, and death. In Ephesians 6, 10 to 18, Paul reminds us that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And Paul continues, as many of you know, to tell us to put on the full armor of God to protect us from, the, from Satan, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. Now, it's easy for us sometimes to think, well, We've received grace. Jesus died for our sins. So I guess that means we can slack off, right? Mm -hmm. But it does not give us the freedom to do what we want. Scripture tells us, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? By no means. I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. And finally, 1 Peter says, live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's slaves. Now, our reading this morning from Galatians talks about a different kind of freedom and slavery. We are no longer slaves to the law but we receive, receive freedom and grace from Jesus Christ. We no longer are responsible to follow the whole law and be justified by the law, which means that we don't have to be good enough to get into heaven. We get into heaven by God's grace, not by following the law. Instead, through the Holy Spirit, we receive righteousness by faith. Paul concludes the reading by declaring that circumcision and the requirements to follow the law is irrelevant. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. Romans 6.18 says that we are free from sin and slaves to righteousness. In Galatians 5.13, Paul reminds us that our freedom is not to serve the flesh, but to serve one another humbly in love. Ben Gieselbach describes our freedom and our relationship with Jesus. And he says, being free in Christ, real freedom, means seeing things clearly. It means knowing who you are and what God has done for you in Christ. It means loving and obeying him with the full assurance that God will make good on his promise. And you will he spend eternity with him. The kind of freedom doesn't come by living however you want or picking and choosing what laws to follow. True freedom comes from believing and obeying the gospel. 
Finally, this morning, the good news is that we can wait in joyful hope for Jesus to come again. And when Jesus returns, as Revelation tells us, we will have no death, no mourning, no crying or pain. Independence Day is a day of parades, fireworks, hot dogs and hamburgers, time with the family, and for those of us in the Mid-Atlantic, a time at the beach. But the day should be much more. We need to remember and thank God for the freedoms that we experience as Americans. We need to thank God for all those who defended those freedoms, especially those who made the ultimate sacrifice. We need to thank God for the beauty of creation in the U.S. But most importantly, we need to thank God for freedom from Satan, from sin, and from death through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. I wish you a happy and healthy 4th of July. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen. In a few moments, we will have the opportunity to receive communion. And I want to emphasize that in the United Methodist Church, the table is open to all who profess Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. We have a number of options for communion this morning. We can do it uh, through bread and wine. Some of you may have taken the small cups that have the, um, the, the wafer and the, and the juice in them. My wife has become the expert at making sure that she, you can get those open. So that is our invitation for communion. Please know that donations to our church for our offering are for Catonsville Emergency Association and can be sent to 2100 Westchester Avenue, Catonsville, Maryland, 21228. Now it is time as we recognize the offerings that we have made, let us turn to and sing our doxology. Take, eat. 
This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ is alone again. Pour out your Holy Spirit, Lord, on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. This is the body of Christ, which has been broken for you. This is the blood of Christ, which has been shed for you. The table is ready. You have received the body and blood of Christ. You have been made pure. Go forth to love and serve the Lord.
if you've not done so already, I will offer you a few moments to turn to the Lord in silent prayer. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, that once again we have come body hungry and spirit weak. And you have met us with gifts of bread of life and the cup blessing. Let us now go forth in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of ours have seen the Son, whom you have prepared for all the world to see. And honor and glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we are yours to share your mercy and truth and peace with all the world. Amen. Amen. I wanted to take a moment and give you a little preview of the song that we're about to sing. Some of you may know the history of it, some of you may not. But it was written by Julia Ward Howe in the Civil War time. And it was actually a song that was sung around the campfires in the evenings. So let us rise to sing Battle Hymn of the Republic, number 717.
May Almighty God bless you. May Almighty God keep you. May Almighty God's face shine upon you. May you go out into the world this day, renewed and refreshed by worship, renewed and refreshed by the body and blood of Christ, renewed and refreshed, ready to turn away from sin, to use the full armor of God, and ready to be fruitful, and ready to go out into the world and to love others as Christ loved us. We ask all these things in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.